different people to see different fields that they can get involved in. The more fields that the students can see, the better off We actually have be. an employability rubric for our kids uh, to see if they're employable when they Not leave Not all here. students get it, but it's, uh, it's something to shoot for. stress to you guys is safety first. When you're not okay. using it, treat that just like a lot. Some of the factors that we're going to talk to you about today is going to be distance, meaning how far from the wall you are with the gun, where the gun is in relation to your body. Generally, it wants to be directly in front of you, you guys. Okay. So you move the gun with yourself up and down. The big down. thing is just knowing trigger lock on or off. So when you engage the, the trigger, that's just the hand. Once you fully engage, when you spray across these surfaces, you're spraying the paper facing of the drywall and you're spraying across the joint compound. The joint compound is going to want to suck it in a little bit faster than the paper. So the roller's job is to kind of equalize everything as it's happening. Work. Not right elbow to elbow. You want to give each other enough space to move, but the sprayer guy always goes first, makes a couple of passes. The roller guy follows with the roller to use it out. It's really important to be consistent in that, how fast you move and how far away from the wall you are. Very important point is to get the roller on it while it's wet. And if the paint starts to dry, um, before you get to it with the roller, it'll, it'll do that thing where it sucks in unevenly on the two different surfaces. And that would create what we call flashing, which won't look good. We're going to keep a roller train with us for this roller. I'm not really interested in taking paint out of the train to put on the wall. All the paint that I want to work with is on the wall. The purpose of this is just to keep the roller wet. If this starts to dry out, it gets a little weird. So to load the roller just to keep it wet, you use this trough, this little grid right here. You want to start on the corner working from the top down. And like Todd said earlier, it's really key to get within about an inch of that corner but not drag into the opposite side. You can tuck it right up into the top and just pull it down, bending at your waist. See that now we have a roller texture over here. Can you guys see that? This roller creates just a nice soft little texture, which is what creates the even look between the paper and the mud. When you have the roller on the wall or on the ceiling, you don't need to put a lot of pressure on the roller. You don't need to squeeze it into the surface at all. It just kind of floats. And the key is to just keep it even, an even amount of pressure across the surface. And when you have a roller guy, though, you always want to move in the same direction that your partner's straight in. You don't want to cross them, go in the same direction. You'll notice that Todd's doing overlapping passes. He does maybe a 30, 30 to 50 percent. Uh, ceilings are a little bit more difficult just because you're looking up as you do it. So your, your hand-eye coordination and your balance and your, your body control has a little bit the, more uh, issue. The roller the extension pole is adjustable, so if we're in a tight space like a closet, you shorten it right up like this on a ceiling, we run it wide open. That sprayer guy is only as good as the dude with the roller. Because if you go too far and you hang your partner out, you literally hang them out to dry and you make a mess, okay? Yeah. Any questions? You said enough to just uh, like go the trigger in the middle of the ceiling. What's a good way? How do you let it come to a good stop? Usually, go all the way from wall to wall. So when you're on on the trigger, if you're coming across, carry it all the way to the end and let off just before you get to the wall. Then re-engage. You'll, you'll find once you get a pattern going, you guys, you'll feel comfortable just going up and down. And stand. Stand. If you have to stop in the middle of the ceiling to wait for your rolling partner to catch up, with you stop in a mud joint like we did right here. Yeah, stop in that the line joints. It's easier to feather back in from a mud joint than to stop in the middle of the paper. You can yeah. get an overlap on the paper, whereas you won't get one in the mud. <laughs>
during their downtime, they're digital. Yeah. They're, you know, looking up. So uh, somehow we got to figure out how to hook them into the digital age right. with construction rather than digital age with all the, you know, YouTube sort of stuff.